Mesdames et messieurs, salut, bienvenue sur Haitian Public Media, je suis Abner Gelin. Jeudi en ce mardi, c'est toujours un plaisir, chaque fois que j'ai chance pour rentrer la caillou. Moi, je dis merci à tous les amis, fanatiques, famille, tout le monde, quel que soit côté ou à côté. Bienvenue sur Haitian Public Media et bonne journée. Moi, je viens encourager vous pour subscribe si vous pouvez faire ça. Rémi vidéo qui est très facile, qui a un petit bouton sur le bon pouce, cliquez sur lui. Fais commentaire. Il a fini. Partagez le channel avec les amis, les familles, tout le monde qui vous connaît. Depuis que vous pensez, il a bénéficié. Et bien, comme nous connaissons, mesdames et messieurs, hier soir, c'était l'ouverture de la Convention démocratique aux États-Unis. C'est côté que le Parti démocrate là a présenté Kamala Harris. Et dans deux jours là, Kamala Harris pourra officiellement accepter nomination pour les capables de représenter le Parti démocrate là dans l'élection présidentielle qui va le faire le 5 novembre Cap là. Kamala a déjà choisi vice-président, c'est Tim Waltz et ces deux éléments sayo, deux caractères sayo, c'est eux-mêmes qui a possibilité pour avoir une présidente des États-Unis sous Donald Trump. Eh bien, hier soir, c'était vraiment un bagaille électrifié. Monde qui a assisté à l'événement, ça, c'est vraiment un bagaille extraordinaire. Moi, j'ai trois caractères qui m'ont fait entendre. Je ne vais pas faire un peu de commentaires aujourd'hui, hein, du tout. Je seulement pour laisser entendre position, caractère, ça y est. C'est quand même le monde qui te parle. Mais, trois, ça y est. M'a pas une chance pour nous entendre. Premièrement, c'est va Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez. Yon jeune congresswoman dans New York. Petite immigrant qui tape travail dans un restaurant. Mais comme nous connaissons les États-Unis, c'est un pays qui va y opportunité à toute qualité de monde. Et je dis là, dame ça, c'est une, dans congresswoman, très puissant aux États-Unis. Très jeune, mais très puissant. Deuxièmement, on va le faire entendre, Hillary Clinton, les mêmes qui étaient presque président. Et je dis là, qui passe bâton par Kamel Harris et qui va le travail pour assurer que femme noire ça devient premier président des États-Unis. Et finalement, on va le faire entendre Joe Biden lui-même qui te parlé hier soir aussi qui baille Kamel Harris full endossement passé à Kamel à bâton en tout pour que les États-Unis capables avancer non, ils ont l'autre génération. C'était avec un peu de fierté, un peu de joie, de t'avoir assisté événement ça. C'est un moment vraiment qui fait un monde fier pour son Américain. Et me souhaiter, mesdames et messieurs, un peu l'autre pays, t'es copié sous pays ça. Quel que soit ça, mon dit, que vous aille les États-Unis, que vous parlez aux les États-Unis, qui ont ironisé ou leur dit ça, qui ont pas ironisé ou, frère Maxime Haïtien, les États-Unis, pas gagné pays tant cool. Et ça, son vérité, les prouvait tant après tant. N'est pas de monde qui le travaille, qui veut rester en bas la loi, ou capable de devenir n'est pas de bagaille qui ouvre. Eh bien, sans pas du temps, on va le faire entendre, Alexandra, Ocasio Cortez, lui même qui pourra parler et expliquer qui est-ce qu'elle est et pour qui ça qu'elle doit voter Kamala Harris en novembre là et pour qui ça qu'elle doit rejeter Donald Trump. On nous commencer avec Alexandra Ocasio Cortez. Thank 
you, Chicago, for your energy. Thank you, Kamala Harris and Tim Walls, for your vision. And thank you, Joe Biden, for your leadership. You know, six years ago, I was taking omelet orders as a waitress in New York City. I didn't have health insurance. My family was fighting off foreclosure, and we were struggling with bills after my dad passed away unexpectedly from cancer. Like millions of Americans, we were just looking for an honest shake. And we were tired of a cynical politics that seemed blind to the realities of working people. It was then, only through the miracles of democracy and community, that the good people of the Bronx and Queens chose someone like me to elect them in Congress. And America, in my heart, I know from that same cloth of hope and aspiration, we will also elect Kamala Harris and Tim Walls as President and Vice President of the United States of America. I am here tonight because America has before us a rare and precious opportunity. In Kamala Harris, we have a chance to elect a president who is for the middle class because she is from the middle class. She understands the urgency of rent checks and groceries and prescriptions. She is as committed to our reproductive and civil rights as she is to taking on corporate greed. And she is working tirelessly to secure a ceasefire in Gaza and bringing hostages home. In Kamala Harris, I see a leader who understands. I see a leader with a real commitment to a better future for working families. And Chicago, we have to help her win. Because we know that Donald Trump would sell this country for a dollar if it meant lining his own pockets and greasing the palms of his Wall Street friends. And I, for one, am tired about, of hearing about how a two-bit union buster thinks of himself as more of a patriot than the woman who fights every single day to lift working people out from under the boots of greed trampling on our way of life. The truth is, done. you cannot love this country if you only fight for the wealthy and big business. To love this country is to fight for its people all people, working people, everyday Americans like bartenders and factory workers and fast food cashiers who punch a clock and are on their feet all day in some of the toughest jobs out there. You know, ever since I got elected, Republicans have attacked me by saying that I should go back to bartending. But let me tell you, I'm happy to any day of the week because there is nothing wrong with working for a living. Imagine, imagine having leaders in the White House who understand that. Leaders like Kamala and Tim. But Chicago, just because the choice is clear to us does not mean that the path will be easy. Over the next 78 days, 
We will have to pour every ounce, every minute, every moment into making history on November 5th. But we cannot send Kamala and Tim to the White House alone. Together, we must also elect strong Democratic majorities in the House and in the Senate so that we can deliver on an ambitious agenda for the people. Because if you are a working parent trying to afford rent and child care, Kamala is for you. If you are a senior who had to go back to work because your retirement didn't stretch far enough, Kamala is for you. If you're an immigrant family just starting your American story, Kamala is for you. America, when we knock on our neighbor's door, organize our communities, and elect Kamala Harris to the presidency on November 5th, we will send a loud message that the people of this nation will not go back. We choose a new path and open the door to a new day, one that is for the people and by the people. Thank you. Thank you very much. God bless. God bless you all. Et ça, mesdames et messieurs, c'était Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, petite immigrant qui sortit Puerto Rico et qui est entré aux États-Unis avec opportunité aux États-Unis. Bye. Jeune dame, ça, capable de camper comme un membre congrès dans un pays plus puissant dans le monde là pour l'exprimer de façon ça. Et je suis capable de sincèrement, la Kaye je suis un autre président, nous ne savons pas qui est. Donc, ça, c'est l'opportunité. Et quand y a là, mesdames et messieurs, je vais me faire entendre. Hillary Clinton, lui même tout qui va le paraître, qui va le parler pour qui ça, que nous devons élu Kamala Harris avec Tim Waltz. Et non seulement nous devons élu Kamala Harris comme président, comme... Alexandria Abenzo Dino, nous devons aussi voyer des congressmen pour aller travailler avec le président. Parce que lui-même seul n'est pas capable de faire lui. Sinon, il y a une majorité dans la Chambre des députés et majorité dans le Sénat. À nous écouter, Hillary Clinton. Konya la. Kamala locked up murderers and drug traffickers. She will never rest in defense of our freedom and safety. Donald Trump fell asleep at his own trial. And when he woke up, he made his own kind of history. The first person to run for president with 34 felony convictions. As Vice President, as Vice President, Kamala sat in the Situation Room. We also know as Vice President Kamala sat in the Situation Room and stood for America's values. I know what it takes and I can tell you as Commander-in-Chief, Kamala won't disrespect our military and our veterans. She She reveres our Medal of Honor recipients. She won't be sending love letters to dictators. She will defend 
democracy and our Constitution and will protect America from enemies, foreign and domestic. Think about it. The Constitution says the President's job is to take care that the laws be faithfully executed. Those are the words of our founders. Take care. Just look at the candidates. Kamala cares. Cares about kids and families. Cares about America. Donald only cares about himself. On her first day in court, Kamala said five words that still guide her. Kamala Harris, for the people. That is something that Donald Trump will never understand. So it is no surprise, is it, that he is lying about Kamala's record. He's mocking her name and her laugh. Sounds familiar. <laughs> but we have him on the run now. No matter what the polls say, we can't let up. We can't get driven down crazy conspiracy rabbit holes. We have to fight for the truth. We have to fight for Kamala as she will fight for us. Because you know what? It still takes a village to raise a family, heal a country, and win a campaign. Et maintenant, mesdames et messieurs, nous pourrons le faire entendre finalement Joe Biden qui pourrait paraître pour le parler en pile bagaille. Donc, nous résumer, nous couper pour nous capables de faire des parties qui nous pensent qui sont importantes à nous-mêmes. Il y a un bagaille que Joe Biden dit à la fin de discours là. Il dit que l'Amérique, moi, je parti qui est plus important dans la vie. A ou même, America, I give my best to you. Donc, mesdames et messieurs, m'boua le fait de Joe Biden dans la présentation li, kote que le palais de accomplissement li, et m'a encouragé tout le monde pour aller garder tout discours en entier. C'était un discours très puissant, un discours très émotionnel. Kote que yon président vraiment qui accomplit des bagailles extraordinaires pour pays, il il pourra passer bâton baillon plus jeune baillon plus jeune pour capable avancer avec pays ça on entend ensemble Joe Biden My dad My dad used to have an expression, for real. He'd say, Joey, family is the beginning, the middle, and the end. And I love you all. <laughs> Folks. <laughs> and America, I love you. Let me ask you. Let me ask you. Are you ready to vote for freedom? Are you ready to vote for democracy and for America? Let me ask you, are you ready to elect Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz, President and Vice President of the United States?
My fellow Democrats, my fellow Americans, nearly four years ago, in winter, on the steps of the Capitol, on a cold January day, I raised my right hand and I swore an oath to you and to God to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution and to faithfully execute the office of the President of the United States. In front of me, in front of me was the city surrounded by the National Guard. Behind me, a capital that's two weeks before had been overrun by a violent mob. But I knew then, from the bottom of my heart, that I knew now there is no place in America for political violence. None. You cannot say you love your country only when you win. In that moment, I wasn't looking to the past. I was looking to the future. I spoke of the work at hand, the moment we had to meet. It was, as I told you then, a winter of peril and possibility. A peril and possibility. We we're in the grip of a once in a century pandemic, historic joblessness, a call for racial justice long overdue, clear and present threats to our very democracy. Thank you. And I believe now that progress was and is possible. Justice is achievable. And our best days are not behind us, they're before us. Now it's summer. The winter has passed. And with a grateful heart, I stand before you now on this August night to report that democracy has prevailed. <laughs> democracy. Democracy has delivered. And now democracy must be preserved. <laughs> I know and believe in an America where honesty, dignity, decency still matter. An America where everyone has a fair shot and hate has no safe harbor. An America where the fundamental creed of this nation, that all of us are created equal, is still very much alive. Trump calls America a failing nation. No, I'm sorry, th but think about this. Think about this. He publicly says to the whole world, I'm going to say something outrageous. I know more foreign leaders by their first names and know them well than anybody alive. Just because I'm so damn old. <laughs> but I'm not joking. Think of the message he sends around the world. When he talks about America being a failing nation, he says we're losing. He's the loser. He's dead wrong. <laughs> Many of you are very successful people who travel the world. Name me a country in the world that doesn't think we're the leading nation in the world. Without America, not a joke, think about it. I'm being literal. Who could lead the world other than the United States of America? <laughs> well, guess what? America's winning, and the world's better off for it. America's more prosperous, and Americans are safer today than we're under Donald Trump. 
Trump continues to lie about crime in America, like everything else. Guess what? On his watch, the murder rate went up 30 percent, the biggest increase in history. Meanwhile, we made the largest investment, common and I, in public safety ever. Now, the murder rate is falling faster than any time in history. Violent crime has dropped to the lowest level of more than 50 years. And crime will keep coming down when we put a prosecutor in the Oval Office instead of a convicted felon. And folks, the distinguished senator from the C Senator from California and I passed the first ban on assault weapons. And guess what? It worked. If we care about public safety, we need to prevent gun violence. And what makes me ashamed when I travel the world, which I do, more children in America are killed by a gunshot than any other cause in the United States. More die from a bullet than cancer, accidents, or anything else in the United States of America. My God. That's why Kamala and I are proud. We beat the NRA when we passed the first major bipartisan gun safety law in 30 years. I'm serious. That comes from here. And now it's time to ban assault weapons again. And demand universal background checks. It's hard. I never thought I'd stand before a crowd of Democrats and refer to a president as a liar so many times. No, I'm not trying to be funny. It's sad. Trump continues to lie about the border. Here's what he won't tell you. Trump killed the strongest bipartisan border deal in the history of the United States. That we negotiated with the Senate Republican took four, months, four weeks. Once it passed, and they acknowledged those expansive border change in American history. He called senators to say, don't support the bipartisan bill, because he said it would help me politically and hurt him politically. My God. No, I'm serious. Think about it. Not a joke. Ask even the press who doesn't like me. They'll tell you that's true. <laughs> Typically, Trump, once again, putting himself first and America last. Then I had to take executive action. The result of the executive action I took, border encounters have dropped over 50 percent. In fact, there are fewer border crossings today than when Donald Trump left office. And unlike Trump, we will not demonize immigrants, saying they're the poison of blood of America poison the blood of our country. Kamala are committed to strengthening legal immigration, including protecting dreamers and more. And here's what else I believe in. Protecting your freedom, your freedom to vote, your freedom to love who you love. and your freedom to choose. I'm proud to have kept my commitment to appoint the first black woman in the United States Supreme Court. Katanji <laughs> Brown Jackson, a symbol for every young woman in America that you can do anything. I'm proud that I've kept my commitment to have an administration that looks like America and that taps in to the full talent of our nation. The most diverse cabinet in history, including the first black woman in South Asian descent to serve as vice president. 
to strengthen NATO. We did. We united Europe like it hadn't been united for years, adding Finland and Sweden to NATO. <laughs> Ten days before he died, Henry Kissinger called and said, not since, not since Napoleon has Europe not looked over their shoulder at Russia with dread until now, until now. Well, guess what? Putin thought he'd take Kyiv in three days. Three years later, Ukraine is still free. When I came to office, the conventional wisdom was that China would inevitably surpass the United States. They haven't noticed. No one's saying that now. And we'll keep working to bring hostages home and end the war in Gaza and bring peace and security to the Middle East. I love the job, but I love my country more. I love my country more. And all this talk about how I'm angry at all those people who said I should step down. That's not true. I love my country more and we need to preserve our democracy. In 2024, we need you to vote. We need you to keep the Senate. We need you to win back the House of Representatives. And above all, we need you to beat Donald Trump. And elect Kamala and Tim. President and Vice President of the United States of America. Look, they'll continue to lead America forward, creating more jobs, standing up for workers, growing the economy, lower the cost of American families so they just have a little more breathing room. We've made incredible process, progress. We have more work to do. And Kamala and Tim will continue to take on corporate greed and bring down cost of food. They'll keep taking on Big Farm and making insulin $35 a month, not just for seniors, but for everyone in America. And capping prescription drug costs, a total of $2,000, not just for seniors, but for everyone. And folks, that's going to save America again tens of billions of dollars. Folks, they'll make housing more affordable. Building 3 million new homes. Providing $25,000 down payment assistance for the first time home buyer. More than the 10 we approved. Donald Trump wants new tax on imported goods. Food, gas, clothing, and more. You know what that would cost the average family, according to the experts? $3,900 a year in a tax. No, that's, that's a fact. Kamala and Tim will make the child care tax rate a permanent. <laughs> Lifting millions of children out of poverty and helping millions of families get ahead. But you know what Trump has? He put the, he created the largest debt any president had in four years with his $2 trillion tax cut for the wealthy. Well, Trump has a new plan. He wants to provide a $5 billion tax cut for corporations that are very wealthy. We have a thousand billionaires in America. You know what their average tax rate they pay? 8.2%. If we just increase our taxes, we proposed 
to 25 percent, which isn't the highest tax rate even. It would raise 500 billion new dollars over 10 years. And they'd still be very wealthy. Look, let me close with this. Nowhere else in the world could a kid with a stutter and modest beginnings in Scranton, Pennsylvania, and Claymont, Delaware, grow up to sit behind the Resolute Desk in the Oval Office. That, that's because America is, and always has been, a nation of possibilities. Possibilities. We must never lose that. Never. Kamala and Tim understand that this nation must continue to be a place of possibilities, not just for the few of us, but for all of us. So join me in promising your whole heart to this effort. And where my heart will be, I promise I'll be the best volunteer Harris and Waltz has Cam have ever seen. Each of us has a part in the American story. For me and my family, there's a song that means a lot to us, that captures the best of who we are as a nation. The song is called American Anthem. There's one verse that stands out, and I can't sing worth a damn, so I'm not going to try. <laughs> I'll just quote it. The work and prayers of centuries have brought us to this day. What shall our legacy, our legacy be? What will our children say? Let me know in my heart when my days are through. America, America, I gave my best to you. in my career, but I gave my best to you. For 50 years, like many of you, I've given my heart and soul to our nation, and I've been blessed a million times in return with the support of the American people. I've either been the, too young to be in the Senate because I wasn't 30 yet, and too old to stay as president. But I hope you know how grateful I am to all of you. I can honestly say, and I mean this in the bottom, give me my word as a Biden, I can honestly say I'm more optimistic about the future than I was when I was elected as a 29-year-old United States Senator. I mean it. <laughs> Folks, we just have to remember who we are. We're the United States of America. And there's nothing we cannot do when we do it together. God bless you all, and may God protect our troops. Mesdames et messieurs, ça c'était Joe Biden. Nan diskouli. Kote ke li passe baton an bay Kamel Harris. Il promet ke li pwale travay pou li ede e lui. Vice-président là. Il fait comprendre le choix Kamel Harris, c'est un des plus bons choix qu'il fait dans la carrière. Li. Et finalement, il déclaré America, I give my best to you. Et avec ça, la population a chanté Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Comment on continue à souhaiter? Nous avons bien chance pour nous. Voir Barack Obama, avec Michelle Obama, avec un pile l'autre célébrité, et spécialement un pile républicain, qui pourra venir à soi là pour supporter Tike Kamele Harris là.
Je vais faire un peu de commentaires. Je vais souhaiter que vous compreniez ce que vous avez dit. Et je vais encourager vous. Ce sont citoyens haïtiens qui sont naturalisés aux États-Unis. Si vous vivez dans un pays, c'est là que vous habitez. Pas quitter personne, il faut penser autrement. Ça, c'est pays ou tout. Pays adoptif ou, mais c'est pays ou. En tant que pays ou, un bon citoyen doit travailler pour protéger l'intérêt pays et faire ça qu'il est capable pour le protéger ça qui est bien dans le pays. A. Et me penser démocratie, c'est un bagage qui est bon pour tout le monde qui vit aux États-Unis. Non pas M. Abner Gelin, pour Haitian Public Media, passez une très bonne journée. Bonne et bénin. Bye bye.